And Stacey, I hope that you are going to share your personal story of overcoming because that is just one of my favorites. It's such a powerful one to kick us off and remind people, no matter what you're going through, you can get through it to the other side. I love this. Welcome, darling. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate this. And uh, yeah, I'd love to share my story. You know, it's been a, a really remarkable journey. I've gone through a lot and uh, you know, it's all started, you know, it's a crazy story, but it, it all started when I was five years old. I actually had like an ear infection and a virus and my mother took me to the doctor. They gave me some meds and then I went home. And then all of a sudden that night she heard a gurgling sound. She came on in the room to check on me and all of a sudden she saw me in a ground mole seizure turning blue. So they rushed me to the hospital and they had found that the virus had traveled into my brain and caused encephalitis. And I was induced into a coma. And they told my parents after a couple of days that most likely if I came out of it, most likely I would be paraplegic or have severe brain damage. And my parents were totally devastated by it. And my father, who is Greek, and he comes from a Greek island in Greece, uh, there was one church, one statue, and tears used to drop down the statue's eyes. He was praying by the statue. He was imagining the statue praying by my bedside. And he said when he looked up, a teardrop rolled from my eyes. And immediately he saw uh, my eyes open up and the first thing I said was, can I have McDonald's french fries? And and he was like ecstatic. He was like, oh my God, you know, and my parents were really happy. But unfortunately, I didn't, I wasn't paraplegic. I didn't have brain damage, but I did have epilepsy. And that was a lifelong struggle. It was like a roller coaster ride, especially when I got into college and late night studying and all the challenges of uh, the stress and everything, my seizures just increased. And I got to one point where I didn't even know if I was gonna be able to actually finish college. And that was on my bucket list. And, you know, so I wrote into a, a magazine called, uh, it was sponsored by the Epilepsy Foundation of America. And I said, you know, please publish this article. How do people cope with epilepsy? How do they get through it? And three to 400 letters from all over the United States came people poured out their heart to me they were like uh you know they told me their stories how they cope with it how they live with it and it was so inspiring and for the first time in my life i felt like i wasn't alone and you know that was the one of the things that my one of the challenges because back then there was like four or five books on the bookshelf about epilepsy nobody talked about it and those books were written by doctors in medical terminology so if you weren't a doctor it kind of like went right over your head and that kind of pissed me off to be honest with you because there was no help out there so I said, you know, one day I'm going to write a book. I'm going to use these letters. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to help somebody. And so I put, I put these letters aside. I created a regiment. I got through college. I started working in, in the city, in the big corporate world. And then oh, everything was going great. And then one day I felt a seizure coming on. I fell to the ground and, um, you know, I, someone just stepped over me. It was a big corporate executive and he just stepped over me and kept walking. And I was awake and conscious in the seizure and I'm looking up and I'm like, I can't believe this guy just stepped over me. You know, he didn't even help me up. And, you know, and I, at that point, you know, not too long after I was released from my position and, you know, they basically told me in a nice way it was because I had epilepsy. And so, you know what, I just didn't let it get to me. I said, you know what? It just wasn't meant to be. I walked out of there with my head up high and I said, you know what, I'm gonna be a success. I don't know where I'm headed, but I'm gonna be a success. So I started to freelance, started to do a whole bunch of other stuff. And I started writing and uh, I, I met this herbalist and this herbalist had me do a bunch of stuff on natural healing and holistic living. And I, I was like, wow, a lot of these things could apply to my life. And I started to apply holistic living to my life. I changed my lifestyle. I started using supplements. I started detoxing and my seizures went from 12 to nine to eight, seven, six to the point where they got control with that, with my combination of my meds. And I was living a great life. And, and I, you know, I put together a book called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. It became a bestseller. I rewrote it um, during COVID because you know, it was like 25 years since I wrote that book. It became a bestseller again. And you know, over the course of my life, I've written 25 books, had uh, a ton of bestsellers. I've been on the Dr. Oz show five or six times. I've actually been, I've been a nationwide speaker. I do a lot of coaching. And then one day my friend who actually is a podcast Host. He said, Stacy, you really need to tell the world your story and you need to get your voice out there. You need to be heard and people's stories need to be heard and you are the one to do it. And I said, you know what? 
I, you know, I was a little scared because I never did podcasting before. I said, but I get, I'll give it a try. So I, I opened the podcast and the podcast blew up. Within three months, I, I had over I had close to a year of bookings. And, you know, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. But over the course of time, I have over one million people listening to my podcast. And I've actually turned it into a six-figure business. And it's been incredible. And what I love about it is that my story was heard by so many people and I've helped so many people just by my story because they don't have to have epilepsy. Just one little segment from my story gives people motivation and encouragement and, and helps people understand that you're not alone and no matter what you go through in life, everybody has a story, everybody has obstacles, we could all get through it. And if you think about it, everybody goes through something in life and we all get through it. We, you know, it's that point when we're in it, that's really overwhelming, but over time we always get through it. And so I have people come on my podcast and it's really motivational. It's, you know, it's all about self-improvement and topics going from health to, to mental health to, to even people come on and talk about business and how you could actually, you know, improve your life by improving your income and making, taking a lot of stress off your life everything you can think of so it's been a great journey it's been an amazing journey and i didn't realize that i was going to go this way and uh it's been a it's really been an interesting journey and i'm blessed and i'm really happy to help others that's you know really my motivation is to help others that is so inspiring i love this and uh say more about your find your voice launching a podcast what are you doing like what are some practical tips people are like i want to use my story i want to get out there i want to do more speaking and podcasting what are some of your best tips for helping people to really just take that courage and start taking action you know, one of my biggest things that I tell people is that you have to find a niche. You know, the, one of the biggest things is that we have a lot of experience in all different areas, especially as we get older, we learn more, we experience more, but you really have to close that niche up and think about, I want to blank, blank, blank. And you know, and you have to just like close it down and narrow it into a, a small little niche because the smaller your niche, believe it or not, the bigger success you will have. You'll be able to focus on that niche. People will know what you're about and you will have a larger audience, a bigger audience, and you yourself will know what your primary goal is. And I always tell people strategy is key. You know, sometimes people just jump into something and they don't have a strategy. You need an objective. You really need to, um, you know, figure out, okay, I'm going to do these episodes maybe once a week or twice a week or, you know, three times a week. You know, I do it four times a week because I have so many people that want to come on the podcast that I do it like Monday, what, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I might actually even have to open it up because so many people are asking to come on to the podcast and you know so you have to really think about how much how much you want to devote and how much time you have and think about what your strategy is going to be like and I also tell people that you know your quality equipment is, is so important you know because a lot of times people will go on they'll have their computer camera they won't have a pretty background you know they won't have a good microphone and then you see blurriness in the in the screen or you, your their voice isn't clear people will just tune off to that if you don't have you have to invest in quality equipment if you know you might it, you might you know say oh it's a little costly it's not that costly and it also will help help you get a larger audience because the more the more you look like a professional the more people are going to take you seriously and you want people to take you seriously because you're there to make a point you're there to help others and you need to be the person you need to be it you know you are the girl or the guy you know come on you got to look like a professional you got to be that person you know say I'm a badass man I'm a badass I'm I'm the expert you know listen to me and you got to so if you're going to say that to yourself you got to look like it, you know, you really got to look like yeah. it and you got to make it catchy, your designs and the way your, your, your uh, thumbnail looks and your brand in, if you have an intro and an outro, all that stuff matters and you have to make the colors consistent. Sometimes people are just like all over the board. Everything has consistency is key. People don't, if they don't understand what you're about, they're not going to listen to you. So your, your thumbnail, your picture, your colors, they all have to really go with each other and they have to kind of 
kind of be, they got to pop, you know, uh, you know, people, people, you know, there's so many podcasts out there that, you know, it's, it's, you don't want to be a pee in the pod. You have to really be, you know, you really have to pop. So you really have to put some time and energy into how are you going to make yourself pop? You know, and you also have to like plan your launch, you know, and if you already have a podcast, you could relaunch because, you know, there are times when you look at your metrics and you're like, you know, I'm not really getting that many people coming on, you know, so maybe it's time for a relaunch. Even companies do this. You know, everybody does it at one point, you know, when the things are starting to drop down or they plateau, it's time to change things up. And so a relaunch or, you know, or launching your podcast, you know, you you have to change things up. You know, you always have to watch your metrics, watch what you're doing, see how the audience is reacting and, and understand who's coming on your podcast. So you, if you understand your audience, you'll know how to serve them better. And that way, not only you're going to benefit, but they're going to benefit. So you really have to, you know, really do that. And, you know, and you do your research. Like I was saying, you know, you have to always, you know, really put a lot of effort into it. Like, you know, you have to, when people are coming on your podcast, don't just like glance over it in two seconds and see who's coming on. Understand who your guest is. Understand who they're about, what they're trying to get across, their message. I always spend like 10 or 15, 20 minutes sometimes with people before I even start to record the podcast. I've done the research. I've looked at their websites. I've read their stuff. I've, I've read all the material they sent me. But then I sit with them for about 15, 20 minutes and I, I talk to them and I really get to know them as a person because we really, we don't get to know people texting all this stuff and, and reading until you actually really meet the person. And once you meet the person, understand them, understand understand what their compassion is, what their message is, then you can actually have a great podcast because you're going to know how to interact with that person. You're going to know what type of personality they are, and you're going to have an amazing podcast, you know, and I don't like to ask questions personally. Like, like I don't send questions over ahead of time. I like to have a normal conversation because I feel like keeping it real is key too, because, you know, people don't want pre-recorded. Everything looks perfect. You know, if you ever look at a movie, I don't I don't know if you've ever like seen the movies where they have all the mess ups at the end everyone can't wait to see the mess ups you know because it's real everyone oh. wants to know what happens behind the screen you know and it's so you got to keep it real i don't you know so sometimes there's a little mess up we joke about it we go on you know and i think people respect that you know so i don't try to make things perfect because life is not perfect people aren't perfect so let's be let's be real about it you know and i also say to look your best like i've gone to podcasts and people look the host looks like they just just woke up and, and rolled out of bed you know I'm like you know it's like you gotta you gotta really have you know people aren't gonna take you seriously as a host if you don't look your your best if you don't look who the, the brand is who the person you are trying to perceive yourself as and to the audience you have to really look your best look good make your background good and you really have to show who you are and take some time out just like you take time to do the research well take some time out on yourself make yourself look like a professional make yourself look like the person that you want to be perceived as and go out there and rock it you know and just rock it baby and you know and I always tell people CEO is so important you know people don't realize this and I didn't realize it in the beginning either but you know I help a lot of people with this because people aren't familiar with CEO but your title, your description, your keywords that you use in every single podcast you do makes a huge difference because Google has spiders that come through and they look for your, your title. They look for your description. They look for your keywords. That way they know where to rank you, where to put you, and you can get higher and higher ranked on Google. And that makes a big difference too, because you want to be seen. And you know, that's the whole point. Yeah. And you also want a catchy title that is going to make people want to actually stop and read the description. And also that thumbnail, a thumbnail, we're going back to that thumbnail again. If you don't have an eye-catching thumbnail, first thing that's important to a person is the picture. Second thing is the title. And third thing, they're going to read a couple sentences of the description, but not the whole thing. Those first couple sentences are majorly important. So you got to really put some time and effort. And if you don't have the ability to do that, then hire 
hire somebody. Like I take care of that a lot for people because you know, not everyone is computer oriented and understands CEO and not everybody can afford, you know, a lot of money on a big marketing team. So, you know, if you go to people oh, yeah. that can understand this stuff and help you with it, it can make a huge difference on your podcast and you know and get out there you know just don't put your podcast out there and do no nothing about it you have to really first of all you have to put it on on as many platforms as possible like when i started my podcast i made sure it went everywhere i made sure it went on spotify speaker amazon you know apple i hit every single place and then i went on websites to you know that 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 broadcast and advertise you know podcast because i want to be known the more you put your name out there the more you're going to show up on Google, the more people are going to see you, the more people are going to talk about you, the more people are going to share you, and you're going to eventually get all over the place. It's not going to happen at once because it takes time for everything to be acknowledged by Google, but you know, word of mouth is a powerful thing. You start doing these things and you start perceiving yourself as these, as, as a, an important badass and you show a really professional brand. People are going to talk and if you start to really be able to communicate with your guests and really have a great conversation and most of all, a conversation that's going to help people. The purpose of doing these podcasts is not just to make money. No, the first priority, the first thing you want to do a podcast is because you want to help people. That's why I got in this business. The whole thing was is that if people didn't come out in the woodwork to help me, I would not be where I am today. You know, I had people, hundreds of people come out over the course of my lifetime to help me in my roughest times. And to me, it's always giving back, giving back, having gratitude, kindness, loving people, not seeing people, you know, for who they are on the outside, but seeing people who they are on the inside, in their heart. And that's what matters is who they are inside and everyone has a special beauty about them and that's why I created my podcast is to to give people the advice that, that that's going to help them improve and change their life and you know and you know what you you have to you know engage with your fans it's not just about just putting the podcast out there but engaging talking with your fans having a conversation letting them know that you're human just like them and you know that's really important also you want to make sure that you have you know you interact you like you you follow some of your fans you know you have you have conversations you know and, and that helps too you know that really that brings the, it up to like a higher level you know people like that engagement is important so you have to keep that in mind you know and like explore opportunities when you're making money you know and you want to really pop you know you want to profit because you're taking a lot of hours you know doing this podcast you're uploading you're researching you're downloading you're editing you're doing whatever you need to do to make your podcast great and it's it's a job it is a full you know it, it could be a part-time job it could be a couple hours job and I know some people I have one friend he interviews rock and rollers all day and he it's a full-time job for him so you know it, it all depends what you want to do you know and uh and I say mix and mingle, make connections. That's very important. You know, connections is key. You know, uh, you have to get out there and start making connections. Tell people who you are, what you do. I'm a podcaster. I help people. How can I help you? You know, and don't be embarrassed. You know, you never, you know, the worst thing people can say to you is no, you know, and that's, that, right. that's my philosophy, you know ask for help, ask for business, you know, ask people, show people what you could offer them and see what they have to say. The worst thing they could say is no. And then you could change it up and say, well, I understand, but you know, how about this? You know, and you know, you just keep them on a side list and maybe next year or six months from now they're, you know, maybe it's just not a good time right now. You know, don't nix them, you know, go back to them, you know, and always yeah. I say is room for improvement, you know, don't ever think everything is just perfect. As time changes, as the algorithm changes, as every people change, you gotta keep mixing it up and changing your podcast and going with the flow. You know, just like you know, you, you have to just you do what people want for you know that you think is uh, that that the people are looking for because every generation has a different way of thinking. Every generation is different. 
people are different, people age, you know, so you've got to keep changing things up and, you know, and, you know, grow your list and, you know, keep a list. I, I like CRM. Like I, I actually took a 12 hour course to learn how to use the CRM properly. And, you know, it helped me keep a list of all my clients, understand who I'm keeping in contact with, yeah. you know, and that's important too, because think of your podcast, not just as a hobby, but as a business too. And, you know, if you really want to make money, you have to treat it as a business. Don't treat it as a hobby. You know, you got to decide for yourself. That's when yeah. we go back to strategy. Okay. You know, your strategy, you know, now you have to think of it as a business. So, you know, treat it as a business and remember that successful podcasts take time. It's not going to happen overnight, you know, but you know what? You keep working at it and before you know it, great things will happen. Oh, I love that. Keep working at it. Great things will happen. We couldn't have wrapped it up better. Stacey, <laughs> you packed so many amazing tips in there in just 10 minutes. Uh, that <laughs> second half there after you shared your amazing inspirational story. Go ahead and download the checklist, How to Launch a Profitable Podcast. Okay. Get changed um, and connect to Stacey. There are so many ways that you can use your podcast. You can use it just as a marketing channel to get to your business, but as Stacey's pointed out, you can actually monetize the thing itself with sponsorship dollars and ad spend, and there's a whole bunch of other cool ways that you can actually make your podcast a profit center, not an expense center. So really excited to let you guys connect with Stacey and go deeper with you there. Stacey, I appreciate you so much and having a big hug. Thank you so Thanks much. For inspiring the whole world.